Hi and welcome to this video looking at chemical equilibrium. A reversible reaction is said to have attained a state of dynamic equilibrium when the rates of both the forward reaction and the reverse reactions are equal. This does not mean that the concentrations of reactants and products are equal. If you have more reactants than you have products when you're at equilibrium, then your equilibrium is said to lie to the left. If you have more products than you have reactants, then your equilibrium is said to lie to the right. If they are equal, which is unusual, then the equilibrium is said to be in the centre. Today we're going to be looking at ways that we can push the equilibrium either to the left or to the right by changing conditions within the equilibrium. The first thing that we could do to change things in an equilibrium would be to change the concentration of reactants or products. So if we take a reaction where we have A plus B, giving us C plus D. If I were to put in more A into a reaction, this would affect the equilibrium. It would no longer be an equilibrium reaction as we would have unbalanced the equilibrium. And the reaction itself would try to regain the equilibrium. To do this, it would have to get rid of the extra A that I'd put in and therefore would push the reaction to the right hand side to the products. The same thing would happen if I were to take away the D the equilibrium would try to replace the D by pushing the equilibrium to the right hand side. If we were to do the opposite and add in one of the products, so if I were to add in some more C, the equilibrium would try to regain its balance by pushing the backwards reaction more and therefore producing more reactants. If we were to take away some of the A, this would also have the same effect as the C and D would react to produce more A. Changing the temperature is one of the most common ways that we can change an equilibrium. So if we have our equilibrium reaction A plus B to give us C plus D and it has a delta H value and it's positive as this reaction is written from left to right, then we can make two changes. We can either put the temperature up or we can put the temperature down. If we have a delta H that is positive, this is an endothermic reaction. This means that if we increase the temperature, we favour that reaction by giving it more heat, so that would push the equilibrium to the right. If we were to decrease the temperature, then this would favour the exothermic reaction, which would be the backwards reaction, as it tried to heat the reaction back up, and it would push the equilibrium to the left. If we had the same reaction, but it was a negative delta H, then we would see different things happening when we change the temperature. If you were to put the temperature of an exothermic reaction, so a reaction that already produces heat along with the products, then that will push the reaction backwards as it tries to get rid of the heat and will favour the endothermic reaction. If, however, you were to put the temperature down, the reaction will try to produce more heat to bring the temperature back up again and will therefore push the reaction to the right. Let's have a look at our reaction. We'll say that A and B are both gases, gases, C is a solid and D is also a gas. If we were to increase the pressure, then this would mean that we would probably have made our vessel smaller. So our reaction will shift to the side where there are less gas molecules to try and decrease the pressure back down. So this would shift our reaction to the right in this case where we have less gas molecules. If somehow we were to decrease our pressure, possibly make the vessel bigger, then the reaction will try to increase the pressure back to the equilibrium pressure and it would do that by pushing it to the side where it had more gas molecules, in this case on the reactant side. The final thing we can do is to add a catalyst. A catalyst has no effect on the position of equilibrium. It gets you to your equilibrium quicker, but it catalyzes both the forward and reverse reactions, so it has no effect on which position your equilibrium has. Here's an example for you to try. You've been given an equation and some information about the enthalpy change for the reaction. You need to consider each of the different conditions that have been changed and what effect it would have on the position of equilibrium. So looking at the first condition that we've changed here, we're going to be adding in more chlorine. 
This means that we're adding in more reactant and that means that we'll push our equilibrium to the right as we try to get rid of that reactant and turn it into product. The second condition change is to remove some of your iodine trichloride there. By removing iodine trichloride, you disrupt the equilibrium and the equilibrium tries to replace the iodine trichloride that you've removed and that will again push your equilibrium to the right. If you were to decrease the pressure, then the equilibrium will try to produce more gas. That means in this case, we're producing more chlorine and that will push your equilibrium to the left. Finally, looking at raising the temperature, you need to consider the enthalpy change for that. This is an exothermic reaction, which means that we produce heat. So if you're to add heat into the reaction, that's unfavorable. So it will favor the endothermic reaction, which is the backward reaction. Thank you for watching this video on equilibrium. I hope that you find it helpful. Please remember to subscribe or follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos.